Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wolf Pit. Turkeys are usually the centerpiece of most Thanksgiving dinner tables. They're even the centerpiece of some Christmas dinner tables if you're not turkeyed out by then. And for some reason, the holidays is really the only time the majority of people even think about buying and cooking a turkey. Myself included. I can't explain why I don't buy whole turkeys throughout the year, but I do think some people are intimidated by cooking a whole turkey for fears of the turkey being powdery dry or not thoroughly cooked for reasons like they didn't have a thermometer or they didn't thoroughly thaw the turkey or they left the neck and the giblets inside the turkey. So if you're intimidated about cooking a whole turkey or you just don't need a whole turkey, then a turkey breast is a great option. Which is what I'm going to be cooking today, this fresh seven pound all natural turkey breast. Now when I say all natural, I mean all natural. This is 100% fresh with no added solutions or broth which makes it a prime candidate to be brined. I'll do another video on a turkey that's been enhanced, meaning it has a solution added to it, which obviously adds moisture, salt, and flavor, which means it's basically been brined at the processing plant by injecting the solution with a whole bunch of needles throughout the turkey. If you notice this fresh, all natural turkey, the skin doesn't have any holes in it. But if you buy a turkey or a chicken from the grocery store, you're gonna see all the holes in the skin to where it's been injected. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with buying an enhanced turkey. But if you do plan on brining your turkey, you need to look for one that has a lower percentage of the solution added. That way you don't end up with an overly salty turkey. So brining a turkey or turkey breast is like an insurance policy and guaranteeing you that you're not gonna dry the turkey or turkey breast out. But I also like the subtle flavors that a brine can add to meat. So even though I did brine this turkey breast, it's not really necessary with such a quality turkey. Scooter, shut up before you say it. Uh, I was just gonna say you're supposed to wash the turkey breast before you cook it cause it's dirty. Scooter, you're wrong. Look it up on the FDA website before you say anything. But by all means, if you and your kin want to wash your poultry, go right ahead. So let's get our turkey unwrapped and see what it looks like. And this is a pretty good looking turkey breast. So we're going to be brining the turkey breast today. So for us, the simplest way to do this is to remove the turkey or turkey breast from the packaging and then place it into a two and a half gallon Ziploc bag. And of course, you can use a big pot, a bucket, or a cooler to brine your turkey in. I mean, if you had to and you had enough salt, you could use your swimming pool. Use whatever works for you. So once the turkey breast is in the bag, set it aside. And now let's get our brine ready. A brine technically only has two ingredients, water and salt. But in order for a brine to work, you have to have the proper water and salt ratio. Otherwise, your meat's just simply soaking in salted water and not actually brining. And you can use any kind of salt you like, regardless of what anyone says but I would avoid iodized salt. Besides that, salt is salt, whether it's table salt, kosher salt, canning salt, pickling salt, etc. The amount of weight to volume is what's different. The taste of some salts are also different, but in order to make osmosis work, which is the chemical reaction when you brine, salt is salt. So as long as you have 10 ounces of salt per gallon of water, you have a proper brine. For example, for 10 ounces of salt, you would need one cup of table salt, or one and a half cups of Morton kosher salt, or two cups of diamond kosher salt. So for today's turkey breast, we're making one gallon of brine. So we added one and a half cups of Morton kosher salt and a half a cup of brown sugar. Now at this point, you can add any other herbs and spices you like. And there's a lot of brine recipes out there that call for some sort of fruit juice. So like I said before, in order for our brine to work, you have to have the right ratio of salt to water, or in the case of fruit juice, liquid. So if you're using a brine recipe with other liquids in it, you need to subtract that amount of water you add to the brine. Otherwise, you've diluted your brine and it's just not going to work. So we just poured in a quart of cold water. Now even though the pot and brine are on the stove, we're not heating it up. Now mix the brine very vigorously. And at first, all the salt and sugar is not going to dissolve. But once you add your second quart of cold water and give it another really good mix, it should all be dissolved. Once all the sugar and salt have completely dissolved, pour it into the bag with your turkey breast.
followed by another quart of cold water. And finally, a quart of ice. Now work the air out of the bag and then seal it up. And just to make things easier in case it leaks and to keep the breast sitting the way you want to, totally submerged into the brine, just put it in a bowl. And then this goes into the refrigerator for 24 hours. Now I'm smoking this turkey breast, but if you want to cook this in the oven, you can. Just bump your temperatures up to 325 to 350 degrees. So we need to set the temperature on our Kodiak to 275 degrees. So all we have to do is turn the grill on and wait for it to preheat. That's it. Once our Big Bear is preheated to 275 degrees, it's time to add our turkey breast, which we've already drained, rinsed, and patted dry with paper towels. We put it into an aluminum pan to catch the drippings to make gravy with later. Once you get it into the pan, you might have to talk to it to coerce it to stand up the way you want it to. Or you could add some apples, oranges, potatoes, carrots, or whatever you want around it to help it stand up. Mrs. Wolfpin had a few choice words for it, and it finally decided to cooperate. Now slide it into the center of the Kodiak, and then insert the meat probe into the thickest part of the breast, ensuring that the tip of the thermometer is not touching bone. And the smoke wood of choice for today's cook is applewood. Once the meat probe is inserted into the turkey breast, plug it into the probe port on the Big Bear controller, and then set the probe temperature to 160 degrees. Now close the lid and let the turkey breast smoke at 275 degrees for 45 minutes. And here's what our turkey looks like after smoking at 275 degrees for 45 minutes. And to give that skin a beautiful brown tan, we sprayed it with a little bit of cooking spray. And speaking of the skin, if you want really extra crispy skin, you're going to want to smoke your turkey or turkey breast between 325 and 350 degrees. I like smoking my turkey and turkey breast at lower temperatures because in my opinion, it gives the turkey meat a better texture and a better smoke flavor. So I'm more concerned with the flavor and texture of the turkey meat than I am the skin. Now close the lid and let it smoke for another 45 minutes. And here's our turkey breast after smoking for another 45 minutes at 275 degrees for a total of an hour and a half so far. And it was looking and smelling really good, but the temperature was only at 150 degrees. So we gave it one more spray with cooking spray, closed the lid, and let it continue to smoke until it reached 160 degrees. After 25 more minutes of smoking at 275 degrees, our turkey breast is at 160 degrees. So we took it off the Kodiak and let it rest for about 20 minutes before we sliced it. After letting our turkey breast rest for 20 minutes, it's time to slice. Hold on a second, did you see that? Watch it how juicy this turkey is. It's just bursting with juices. And for anyone who's concerned with the pink meat in the turkey, that's due to the chemical reaction from the brine and the smoke. And it's perfectly safe to eat as long as you cooked it to a proper temperature. Mrs. Wolf Pit and I couldn't wait another minute and we had to try a slice. Can you believe how juicy this turkey is? And it was as tender as it was juicy. The applewood pellets gave it a nice sweet mild smoke flavor and then you get the subtle saltiness and sweetness from the brine. The best thing about this brine and smoked turkey recipe, you start off with the basic brine and you can tweak it to your likings, adding any other herbs, spices, vegetables, and fruits. And this recipe will also work in your oven if you don't have a grill or smoker or you simply don't want to smoke your turkey. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you soon.